more circuits left to do when it comes to the 14 wire. And what we have left is this uh, family room. Here's the plans right here. These are extra plans because they kind of framed up the living room a little different. There's no three ways in here, but I guarantee you we're going to get into three ways in the next video. I have my home run here going to the panel. And we just got to connect the circuit up just like we did in the other videos. We're going to go around and we're going to hit all the power. And then we're going to pull the, um, the switch leg. Since I got my home run here, I'm going to make my first jumper over there to the back door. There's a dining light. Like I'm sure a lot of people want to put the dining light on with the kitchen light circuit. But it's only one light and I don't want to put two different powers in this box. And then I got to start worrying about neutrals getting crossed up. And that just kind of makes things... Um, harder than they need to be so i'm just going to go ahead and put the dining light on with the with the family room and the back porch the back porch usually does go on with the family room but i'm also going to add that dining room light just because i don't want to over complicate this box more than it than it has to be these ones right here are facing the kitchen this is considered a hall and these are facing the kitchen so that's going to be on with the dining room receptacles which as you know is going to be a 20 amp arc fault breaker and my and since this is my dining light it doesn't matter it can be on with a 15 amp regular lighting circuit but all these receptacles right here are going to be on 12 2 also so it's just going to be a continuation of the dining room receptacles it's a wet location we got our home run and we're going to go ahead and start running the power And again, I'm stapling as little as possible because like I said in the earlier video, stapling is going to be uh, one step altogether, except for in the ceiling. Now, if you've got a wire hanging in the ceiling, you definitely want to go ahead and do that first because things will start to get a little tighter when you go to staple down the walls. So this is not a covered porch. So all I need right here is a coach light going out the back. And that's all this one gang's for. So power is always on the inside. Okay, that was the worst jumper of this circuit. So now I actually drilled underneath this window to make this video a little easier. I usually would have just copped out and ran it up and over. for a phone and TV combo, so it does not need power. Okay, that's all the power for the family room. 
So we had our home run come into here. And then we went out of that and we hit the back door switch. And then we hit all the receptacles in the family room. So after I, I walk through and I make sure I've got all the power wires right, power wires right, <laughs> uh, now it's time to do the switch legs. So right here in this family room, uh, it's usually always a fan light combo and we're gonna need 14.3 for that. So this one we can't do, but we're gonna go back and we're gonna go ahead and run this dining room light switch leg. So I'm gonna to pull to my light and then I'm gonna staple back before I put it in the box. Okay, talking about switch sequence, in this case, uh, you might see this is a little different. You might want to come up here and have your first switch as the family light, and then your second switch as the fan, and then the um, dining light. But I don't even want to switch this around to where I got my family light, because you usually go light, light, fan. Fan's always on the back end. So I don't want to have my fan light, my dining, and then go to the fan, fan switch leg. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my dining room switch like this first switch because it's not wrong. It's still an immediate light just as far away. So I'm going to make this my first switch leg going into the box. And then I'll, I'll run my fan light. So I'll have dining in my first position and then my family light in my second and then my family fan in the last one. And anytime you're dealing with like multi-gang boxes, if it makes you feel good to go ahead and mark the wire, then just do it, you know? Sometimes like getting used to this way of putting it in the right slot can, can be a little difficult, but even I mark the wire sometimes when it starts get to, getting to be too much. Dining. Here at the back door, like I said, um, there's no covered porch right here, so all it's getting is a coach light, and there's no floods or anything. So all we gotta do is stub one out this OSB, and then we'll get back to it with how to finish it with, um, it, depending on what siding you get, uh, you might have to put either a three and a half inch pancake, or you might have to do uh, oct or an octagon box. Uh, it just depends if you got vinyl siding, or um, hardy plank, or brick. And if you got a break, that's a whole different thing. But we're gonna get into that when we start finishing up lights. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put some staples in this, just to hold my wire in place because I don't want it falling out of this hole. I got enough out there. Yeah. Okay, so this is my switch leg, so it's going to go into the next slot away from the stud. Okay, so that's the rest of the 14.2 in this room. Now we got to go and do the 14.3 for this fan light.
gotta go ahead and finish this as well.